What's up, guys? Hi, Tumos. Hope you're having an amazing day. So we're going to be talking about developing your own philosophy, kind of how to do that. I'm actually going to give you some, um, some, some procedures that you can do to develop your own philosophy. Sounds silly. Develop my own philosophy. Yeah, man, you got to develop your own philosophy because guess what? If you don't have a philosophy that serves you, you're going to serve a philosophy that the world gives you. Okay? And it's very important. Um, philosophy is a utility. And I believe it's going to help you. It's going to help you in your actions. It's going to help you see to the core of things and not be a slave. And uh, just kind of find your way through these murky waters these days. So let's jump in. Um, the first things first, let's just talk about the kind of content that we see a lot these days. Is It's a lot of doom and gloom content. Um, or, on the other hand, it's a lot of hacky self improvement content like like and I'm, I'm guilty of kind of thinking this is the way I've made content about it you know go hundreds of videos um, you know cold showers no fat stuff like that meditation good habits right but waking up at 3 a.m. is not is like a philosophy for life um, being a minimalist like who wants to be a minimalist you know what does that actually do it doesn't answer a deeper question doesn't actually get you anywhere, okay? So you see a lot of this doom and gloom, pointing out the ills of the world, pointing out what's wrong. You know, there's no way to develop a philosophy for yourself. It's no way to have this sort of guiding code in your life. Watching these these uh, YouTubers, you know, spout out, be stoic, be stoic. You don't you don't really get a choice if you're going to be stoic or not. You lose an arm, you lose a parent, you your dog dies, you, your girl breaks up with you or cheats on you, you can either look at that as, okay, well, I'm going to go and ball my eyes out and I'm going to be a wimp and I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm just going to let life beat me up. Or you, you just be stoic, you know, like, like stoic is in this trend is what I'm saying. Stoic philosophy if you actually look in the history where it originated it was for the plebeians it was for the peasants who lived an extremely hard life a life that was mundane a life of suffering tragedy you know dealing with the dang the dang plague um poverty it, it was be stoic in order to like not be completely miserable before that, it was the Thumatic life. It was of the games, the arena. It was, uh, you know, warrior. Like, Thumos, fire in the belly. And I, I think that's what we need, man. We need this, we need a philosophy of, uh, of fire. We need manhood that is unashamed. Manhood that doesn't need permission. Manhood that breaks the rules. Okay? Again, back to the Stoic thing. Look, look you know, people prefer the watered-down teachings of a Roman emperor in the subtle art of not giving a F compared to, you know, his his diary, which was never supposed to be published, called Meditations. So we have all this watered down, this watered down philosophy, but we have to develop our own. So again, it's, it's back to this manhood, this philosophy of fire and living of life force that we should seek to develop, I believe. And it, it's it's got to be not playing it safe okay it, as a man you don't want to play it safe that's the first thing you kind of de begin to develop this as a man your philosophy in life should be if it's meant to be it's up to me you know it it should be that if it happened then i'll take responsibility for it if your wife went out and cheated on you and now you call her a narcissist that's your fault because you got involved with a narcissist and you weren't savvy enough. You didn't read the books. You didn't have the mental fortitude. You didn't have the, the cognitive uh, capacity to see through that because, you know, you just, you gave yourself, you put her on a pedestal, you fell madly in love. That's BS, man. Like, come on, you got to take responsibility for your life. I, my philosophy is it's best just to take responsibility, re responsibility for everything that happens to me for everything that happens you know that so i don't have to be complaining about it what did i do wrong you know it's like when you play dark souls like 
like uh, I've never played Sekiro, but I heard when you play Sekiro, it's like you can't really say that you lost because uh, it was unfair. The guy got a cheap shot or glitched out. 99% of the time, you lose because you weren't good enough or you misplayed. Same thing in chess. You, you know when you mess up, man. You know when you mess up. That's part. That's a philosophy. And so it's actually what I'm thinking now is like you have to have a philosophy for a lot of different things. So you become, you philosophize on things. And how do you do that? Well, you spend time being alone. You spend time in solitude. Not too much solitude, but you spend time and you get comfortable in solitude. And that gives you a way to think. And you, it gives your mind a way to filter through all of the stuff and the input. Most people these days don't have their own philosophy. It's usually someone else's philosophy. It's someone else, some other video they've heard. Maybe you've done this. I'm guilty of doing this. We just repeat, but we don't really know. And that's dangerous because maybe they're taking someone else's philosophy. And maybe they don't actually know what they're talking about. And so even when I'm saying now, begin to question it. Begin to question. Always, you always want to be... Not a, not a complete skeptic of every single thing, but you want to, to see into the reality of things. So that's, that's what I would recommend. You begin to question. You begin to observe. And, and you can even go back. Like, observe your childhood. Observe the programming since a, you were a young boy. You know, well, let's look at it. Well, first you were raised by your mother and father. This is like your original, you know, this is the original... Uh, indoctrination or you this is the original cult whatever they believe you're believing whatever they think you're you're getting that personality that that those micro expressions the way they react to hard and and uh th these tribulations in life you get that downloaded and and then what happens well you go to school and you're taught that you have to raise your hand to speak up you're going to school with a bunch of kids that you do not like, a bunch of idiots, right? That you know nothing about. Maybe they're from the same poor city as you. You don't like them. You got to stand in line. You got to raise your hand to use the freaking bathroom. It's a mess. You're sitting in the freaking lunchroom and <clears throat> you're going there to, uh, you know, to eat uh, octagon shaped Mexican pizza for you guys that were, you know, I don't know if they still serve that, but they had these nasty cardboard octagon shape Mexican pizza, which was actually pretty good at the time. But now that I look back at it, I just remember those little sausage pieces looking like dog food. And, you know, you're kind of raised. Someone is always telling you what to do. Okay, someone's always telling you this is how it's done. You have to ask permission for everything. You are always kind of afraid of, of upsetting people or making sure they're comfortable you know, if you go to church, there's all these rules. So you don't want to break the rules because then you get punished. And there's just all of this, like, lack of freedom. And so then you go to college and you get assignments and you get the professor telling what you what, you, what to do. Your homework is now uh, required here. And so you get out and you realize that the real world is much different. No one actually cares about you more than they care about themselves. This is good to know because... That means you're free to, to stop worrying so much about what people think because people only are worried about themselves. They don't really care about you. Maybe they'll talk about you for a little bit, but do you think that they go home and they're just like, oh man, his shoes were untied today. He was a complete fool. You know, and then they're thinking about that. Oh, who gives it? Damn, it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's breaking out after you, you have been with this upbringing for most of your life, it's breaking out of this conditioning, which is seeking permission. I really think that this is what separates the boy from the man, is when you get to a certain point, you have to stop seeking permission for everything. You have to start breaking some rules. You have to start doing things and making things happen. And you actually gotta go out there, you gotta make something of yourself. You gotta, you gotta rearrange the environment, man. No one's gonna do it for you. It's, it's just the, the thing. There's so many rules, so many layers that we blindly accept. I'm not aware of them. I'm not aware of them. But there is so many layers upon layers, rules upon rules, that affect how you conduct yourself. And you start to think, well, something's wrong. Why is life like this? Is it me? It's not you. 
It's the limitations that you've accepted, the bonds that you've placed on yourself. You can quickly break those. So you got to go out there and you, you think about what you want and you kind of go after that. You know, with the, with the women, it's like there is such this tim, timid feeling to sort of be physical with a woman. Um, I'm sure you guys experience this. You younger guys experience this more. I mean, even in my, I'm not, I'm in my 20s, but I felt it, you know, it's like, even now with COVID, it's like, oh, can I, can I get, can I even be six feet from this person? It's kind of ending. It's like, okay, if a girl was hanging out with you and, and, uh, she's, she's willingly decided to meet up with you, go out on a date, you better believe that it's okay to touch her. Now, not like grab her, don't just grab her, that's not what I'm saying, but if you learn to do this in a, a way that's non-threatening, because you're not being threatening, you touch someone, dude, if I, if you were here in front of me, I'd probably, I'd be like, come here, man, give me a hug, you know, like, but I'm still a stranger to you, you don't know me, and I don't know you, you could stab me, right, but um, hopefully you wouldn't, but I would do that, because it's just, it's in my nature, I'm a, I'm a man, and we're all men, and so there's things we do that are in our nature to be, we're very, um, it's good to touch other people, not like, like, put your dang head on their, or the, your hand on their head, but like, it's okay to reach and touch their arm, or, you know, you know, maybe, hey, hang your arm on their shoulder for a second, you know, you can be a little cheeky, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta just do, man, you gotta like, embrace that you're a masculine man, and then you have to embrace how that, that feels, and women, you know, don't worry so much. Don't worry so much because they're different. They're different than you. You are not like them. And so stop playing it safe all the time and always trying to make everyone feel so comfortable. And that's a that's a big lesson, man. You know, don't worry about people's comfort all the time. Um, <coughs> excuse me, guys. I'm a little... I have a fever. Actually, I probably shouldn't be making this video right now, but I really want to talk about this philosophy. And so, you know, some more stuff is go out there and just get your hands dirty, man. Like, go out and try. Stop waiting for another tip. Stop waiting for another book. Go out there and try. Stop waiting for someone else's philosophy. You need a job? Too many guys are crying, I can't get the job. I've turned in an application. Dude, go in. Stop just turning the application online. Hitting the send button. You think anyone's going to see that, dude? No. Go in there and ask to speak to the manager. And, and and show enthusiasm. I've gotten multiple jobs like this because I and I, I shouldn't have got them either. I wasn't qualified, but I, you know I go in there. I have some enthusiasm, and I and I show that maybe I can bring this to the table to help solve the problem, you know. And and it's that willingness that that it, the older older guys they kind of they kind of like that man. And it kind of I think it reminds them of their themselves and their youth. And so this is my philosophy: is that as men we have to make things happen. And we have to stop living by the rules. Break the rules. Okay? Um, anything is possible. Anything is possible. If, if you're thinking that it's not, well, then shame on the, the people that brought you up. Or whoever you've been listening to because you're capable of way more than you think. And you just need to try. So let's move on to this part of like, this. you got to embrace solitude. That's key. Because in that solitude, you can take time to read. You can take time to think. You can go and walk. You can figure things out without other people's input. That's huge. And during this time, you should be sort of sort of creating a vision for yourself that you can go after. You know, that's my philosophy is that you've got to have something that you go after. You have to have something that makes this thing worth it. That because the days aren't always that fun. Life is very rarely exceptional. It's often mundane. And if you want to get good at nearly anything, it takes repetitiveness. It takes like fine tuning, but it also takes vision, knowing where you want to go. All right, because then you can set out and then and then it begins to change the way, the, the even the little down to the littlest things that you do throughout the day. And so you got to start to have that vision, have these, these goals, and then plan like a grandmaster. Okay, and you, you do that by spending time alone, shutting off all the noise for a little bit, there's a time and place for everything, but sometimes you just got to have, you got to like put the PS4 in the dang closet, you know, or you just got to go for a walk and and, not, and don't even listen to an audiobook on the walk. Just go for a walk. Be alone. You, you and God, man, you in the silence. Okay. And you find peace there. 
and uh, that's so vital. That's so vital. But you know, let's move on from here. If there's anything you get from this video, maybe it's this. Okay, I, I think that you have to become savvy of how the game is being played. Okay, you know Shakespeare said, "All the world is a stage, and people are its actors," something like that. But you have to start to observe back to the observation you have to observe what is going on what is the programming what is and so this is the this is what i would tell you a simple practice to make you understand the game um i, I got some notes for you here observe with a sort of cold detachment instead of being swept up in a wave of emotion this will give you understanding and wisdom into the reality of things so, for instance, observe the theater of everyday life. When you watch a film, okay, when I watch films, I can never watch a movie and kind of just be taken back by it and fully absorbed. I don't know why, but my mind sort of likes to try to think about what the director wanted to make me feel. I often, I won't look at the main character. I'm not saying I'm unique for this. But I'm sure plenty of people, it's not, sometimes I wish I could just uh, relax and, you know, eat my popcorn and enjoy a movie. But I'm always, like, looking off to the side. I'm kind of seeing the, the set, the pieces they had. Because I want to understand what they wanted to make me feel or what they were getting. I want to get inside their mind. I want to see their philosophy about creating this movie. You know, and if we if we are vibing uh, in a f philosophical way, then... I'm going to enjoy the hell out of the movie. You know, the same thing with The Matrix. I, I, same thing with Fight Club. Why do so many guys like it? Because you're sort of on the same page. You get it. It just clicks. You get it. But most movies these days, especially modern movies, you just see, it's like, it's just weird. It's like, why did you put this in here? I, I remember watching Ozarks, um, the show Ozarks. And there's just this gay scene that was so beyond gay. Nothing against gay. Uh, whatever. I don't care what you are. But they were just so gay. I was like, well, this is like forced to be put in here. Why is, and my monster was saying, why is it forced? Or it's on Netflix. Well, Netflix is kind of, has an agenda maybe. You know, I, I don't go too deep, but you start to entertain, you start to see, well, maybe there is some sort of programming. Maybe they want you to start to be conditioned in a certain way. Maybe if they make this thing okay, then another thing will be okay soon. Well, what about this has been okay? Now there's, this is okay. Well, what about, it, are they going to try to make pedophilia okay? Well, you know, I said that a while back in one of my videos. Who knows? Maybe. It seems like they're already trying. Okay? And so it's a conditioning. It's it's not just like over the course of a month. It's years, man, that you get conditioned. When you see something over and over and over and over repeatedly over a course of time, and then it gets inside of you, and it's almost like you're introducing to the cult of the world where the actions have been done so many times without you questioning it, without you observing it, that now you are indoctrinated and you do not think anything is wrong and then anything that is introduced, you accept without force, without retaliation. So that's crucial. You have to begin to observe. So observe the theater of everyday life. We watch film, observe the directors, the scenes, the actors, um, re remain detached and not fanatical about anything. Okay, remain detached and not fanatical. That is, that is, that is a, a, my philosophy that I live by, that you kind of need to be cold. You kind of need to be um, a little, stand, you know, from observing from the sidelines. Um, observe the billboards, guys, and the commercials and the taxi, tactics that are used to draw you in and make you feel a certain way. You know, a, a good thing I recommend you guys um, learn are, are some basic cognitive biases some basic fallacies of our mind uh, that are very helpful. And you'll see a lot of uh, salesmen, a lot of marketing uses these things. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's assistant partner, was the guy that kind of made these, these famous. There's a lot of them, but you only kind of need to know a handful. And then you begin to see them. You're like, okay, I actually have a series I made like five years ago of the 25 cognitive biases. So you, if you want, I think it's in a playlist. It's old, it's janky. I filmed it on potato <laughs> but uh, that's there, okay? So, but just observe, like, like when you see the commercials on TV and they, they like, kind of make you feel like you're missing something in your life or 
you know, the shiny new thing. Or, or maybe, oh, look, this guy bought his girlfriend a really nice car. Every kiss begins with K. It's this freaking, this woman kisser, her man. Oh, they're in love. It kind of makes you feel like, dude, it's all, it's almost so goofy to me now. Because you just, it's like, it's like, you've seen it so much. Once you become aware, you don't really get to go back. So you observe and you see how you're trying to be, people are trying to manipulate you. And how they're trying to, they're trying to make you feel this need and this lack of you know, a lot of, and that just makes you more of a consumer if you fall into it. And so they're playing you like a fiddle. Uh, observe, observe the social interactions between people. Observe the acting we do ourselves. And then, you know what? Observe the acting you do yourself and then weed the bad acting out. Weed it out, man. And, um, you know, a great way to do that is just talk on camera. And then weed it out, the, your own dramas. I really think that it's good to be authentic, okay? Because... First off, it eliminates a lot of anxiety. It's hard to be authentic. <coughs> when I say authentic, obviously real, you know, it's hard not to be an actor all the time, even though you kind of can't help it in certain situations. Um, but the more and more that you can begin to stop living to impress other people, stop being and acting in a way to make other people like you, and you can tap into that true self, there's a lot of immense power there. Seriously, because then you're free, man. Truly free men. They're, um, I think they're rare. You know, I, I'm not even truly free. Like, uh, it, it's a rare thing it, to really not give a damn. Okay, and uh, that's a philosophy. I want to get to that point, man. Not to, re to really not give a damn. And to be in a place where I could just, just, uh, you know, to not care is, is amazing. But it's so hard when you have so much input all the time. Observe the music and the rhythm and what emotion is being conjured like a spell. Music. It's like a muse that shows up and makes you sick. Music. And you will see that music, it conjures up emotions, man. And so again, remain non-fanatical about music. Some of the most emotional people I know love music. They're passionate about music. Right? You know, enjoy music. But, again, do not let it be... Do not let it be what conducts your moods. You need to be in charge of that. You need to be in control of that. Alright? Um, <clears throat> so, so that's really it. Mean, give your time... You know, here's another thing. Give your mind time to filter the world and put things in order. Expand it with books that require intense imagination. Such as sci-fi... Fantasy, philosophy, and poetry. Do not sleep on these things. When you read, your brain has to take text off of a piece of paper, these little squigglies, formulate, conjure up an image. This forces your brain to use parts of itself that aren't always used. They're dormant, right? They're, they're lying in wait because we don't really have to use our imagination these days. No wonder we're not creative. We don't have to make our own music, we just turn on Spotify. We don't have to come up with our own dramas, we turn on Netflix and watch a drama, whenever we like. We don't read anymore, and so our imagination never gets tested, and then we wonder why we're not creative geniuses, and we can't figure out problems. Because problems are solved by, by being able to think and, and put yourself in these, these uh, situations and be able to think through them. And when your imagination is, is stuck, man, it sucks, all right? So you want to be a creative individual that has that can just like create, come up with stuff. It will even show up in your speaking. You'll feel like the more you read too, like not only your vocabulary, but when you speak to other people, you'll you'll start to like have thoughts that come in like this. They just come out of thin air. It's like they're just, you're like tapping in. Because you are, you're, you're using the brain, you're tapping into the brain's power. And I don't think we're doing that all the time. We're sleeping on some, some hidden power there. Okay, so, you know, <clears throat> read and observe and uh, you'll naturally feel more creative. This, this is what I, this is, you know, fill up your cup, man. Fill up that cup, let it bubble to the top. Like the, the, the words will come to the top, the images, the creativity, and let it run over, man. And then empty the cup. You know, give it, write, create, uh produce, share, and, and and then fill your cup up more. You gotta constantly be filling that cup up or else life gets stale.
Seriously, it gets boring. Go on an adventure. Fill your cup up. So let's wrap it up, man. As your imagination and ob observation grows, your philosophy does as well. Entertain thoughts on how you want to live your life and how you want it to look and the people that you want to be around you. That's key. That's another philosophy. Well, you know, where am I going and who's coming with me? Where am I going who's coming with me? I mean, I think that was from uh, Sam Keen and Fire in the Belly. I don't really like that book that much, but uh, the beginning, I think that's the first page. Where am I going and who's coming with me? It's a good philosophy. Meaning is found in philosophy and how you live out. And your philosophy is how you live out. You know, meaning is found in your philosophy and how you live out that philosophy. Yeah. Okay, so we got to have a philosophy about a little things. It's okay to, uh, it's okay to have a philosophy about a little thing. I think you should, you know. And, and then you need to test that, though. Because that's where you, if you're too rigid in one philosophy, it might not be your own. And it, they might have flaws because there's, we're not perfect, man. You don't need to be perfect. A lot of holes, a lot of gaps. And so you kind of, you refine it and you, you put it up against bigger minds and you, you test it in the real world, right? And that's the beauty of it. And then you kind of, you kind of just become, it's like this compound snowball effect. And it's, it's amazing. You become a powerful man, all right? So let's develop our own philosophy. Man's got to have a philosophy. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, all right? Let me know if you need to see anything. By the way, we're writing the High Thumos Handbook. I'm trying to brush this rough draft up. That's going to be in there. But, you know, we already got like 50 guys that have wrote in an entry. You don't have to be a professional writer. You just got to be in the Discord. It's five bucks a month, all right? Five bucks a month. I mean, it, it, you know, you could buy a, you could buy a cheeseburger for $5. And, but Or you could get in our Discord. If you like it, you like it. ton of great guys. Come and hang out with us. But if you're going to join, please write a... Um, Write a page, you know, write a page and put it in this handbook. You got about a week to do it. Put it in the handbook because I want a guy to read this. Maybe a young guy, maybe an old guy. You know, I want him to read it. I want him to be inspired. And I want him to get a, get a new take. I want him to look at life from a new angle that you can provide. All right? So that's be part of this. Be part of that history. And uh, come join us in the group, guys. I hope you have a blessed day, blessed week, and I'll see you soon. Peace.